Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. We are currently on the hunt for some sigils and we've been told that one may in fact be inside of Warbly Juxta Mare. So we're going to have a look around and uh, see if we can find it. Warbly Juxta Mare dazzles like a Fabergé egg. Lamp lit, rich, brass and British in Baroque. In the distance, carnival music mixes with faint cheering. A queue twists and snarls along the dock. Visitors are not allowed to just stroll into the port. They must be admitted. Okay, so we've done this a few a few times throughout this play th through. So we can either pay to the entrance, which is 250 sovereigns. That's not cheap. We can queue for the pauper's pass. It's time for the lottery. The crowd churns and mutters to itself. We can pay with uncanny specimens. We don't have many of those. Oh. You're in favour with the chairman. Prove you know the right sorts. How oh, I've never seen this one. Let's try this one. It may. I wonder if he uses it up. Yeah, you've used up a little of the chairman's favour. The official checks a list for your name. Nods, then clicks his fingers twice. Workers from the Bureau of Entertainments quickly commandeer your attention. A man and a woman appearing on each side, both exquisitely dressed, their smiles well wetted knives. Come, come already. The, the courtier doesn't like waiting. You'll need an outfit. Okay, so let's pick our outfit. I am in a hatty kind of mood. Let's pick a hat. What a dizzying cornucopia of grotesquely perfect millinery. London would weep in envy. They summon a pair of pale children, their stained glass eyes, a palette of emerald golds. They will help you with anything you need, my lady. No favour too big, too terrible. I'd ask that you don't request a bladder as a hat, however. I hate training new help. His assistants are as attentive as they are silent. Reverently, they offer possibilities in flattering headgear. Fascinators, bowlers, top hats, even veils filigreed with milky blue seed pearls and roses the red of a broken heart. When you finally dismiss the children, the courtier considers you for a long moment. He turns to a wardrobe and hands you several garments, all your size. Once you are dressed, he dismisses you, shooting you into warbly juxta mare. Anything blatantly obvious is like, the sigil is here. No. Oh, God. We might as well write a poor report while we're here. In the face of candy flasks, guards are let down. Presented with this much tea, defences are dropped. This should have been a good place to gather information. Unfortunately, the screams of the donkeys render eavesdropping impossible. Still, even by itself, a list of visitors is certainly worth something. So, if I, if there is, another thing that worries me is that it might not even actually be inside of Warbly. It might be at the lighthouse, maybe? I don't know if that would count as Warbly Juxta Mare, though. Kind of its own thing, right? Let's, cons I assume it's going to be under the strangeness, so let's, let's go follow down that ro road. Consider the strangeness of the lanes. The lanes do not appear as advertised, but all of their sins, the one is the least phantasmagoric. It is most likely the smiles, maybe. Carnivore expressions, syrupy and gleaming, faultless mirrors of the courtier's dazzling grin. Or maybe it is the second-rate sylvaneers cobbled from haberdashery and children's nightmares. The arsenic aftertaste of the candy floss, the wine-wild quality of the local perfumes. Could be anything. Could just be your insecurities, the error of your existence. Whatever the case, the lanes continue their watch. Politely, of course. Okay, 
as you become more familiar with the oddities of Warbly, more of the port will become available to you. If we can find something else. Ponder that strange, unearthly taste. A residue persists from that last cup of tea. A flavour like roasted chestnuts and the colour blue. Like absinthe brewed in the belly of a star. The sour tang of that last sip resides in your palate, in the oily coating on your tongue. It is like, but entirely dissimilar to, the more familiar teas of London. It will go magnificently with a fresh scone, some aunt manufactured jam. But the aroma is fundamentally incorrect. The citrus notes mingle with the nostalgia for a time that's never been. The warm spices heighten the anxiety that bubbles with every sip. This tea remembers how it will come to be made. It is a struggle to ignore the details. Okay, we actually got some tea for that. We are racking a bit of terror here, which is a little bit worrying. But, ooh, hello. Now you see Warbly Chuckster there for what it is. You can see there is a whole other Warbly trapped just below the first. I guess we'll clamber through. I still don't see it. Uh, so yeah, let's clamber through, see if it's actually down below. The door slides like a thief into the periphery of your vision. Too short to enter unless you crawl. You pry the door open. Inside is the throat of a short tunnel. Connective tissue, really. Leading out into a star-swallowed twilight. A canal slicked with juices that cannot so be much seen as felt. Your journey begins here. You can push through to the other side. You press down. It sticks to you. Vernix and the warm reek of intestinal meat, gelatinous and insistent that you remain where you are. Perhaps it's the Sisvian nature of the travel. Perhaps it's the carelessness. Whatever it is, the voice of the man ahead of you, salt dry and salt cold, comes as a surprise. You're late for the sermon too, he hisses. We mustn't be late for the sermon. He, his hand grasps yours, tugs you through a translucent membrane, across the path, through church doors. You don't have time to observe the port. The air seizes you, cold as a corpse's kiss, and something about it is wrong. Still no sign. The bedraggled parson stands before his people, palms raised. Today we stand before they who must grieve to give praise to their sacrifice. Without them there would be no joy, no agony against which we might juxtapose the sweetness of our existence. Do not ever forget this if you forget all else. Do not forget this. He raises his eyebrows at you. A pleasure to see a new member. Please join us later on the beach. Okay, so we can listen to the sermon, talk to the guy on the right, or talk to the guy on the left. Let's listen to the sermon. You find a seat among the parishioners, their skin hauled with strange patterns, tentacular calligraphy that might quite possibly be flesh. The bedraggled parson paces across his stage, let up from behind by his reverence, his conviction in the sutras of his speech. Here is a man assured in his precise place in the universe. And remember next Tuesday, a baptism at the mists, 
all those looking to experience a closer connection with they who must grieve come down to shore. Oh, let's talk to the guy on our right. You lean over to whisper to a diminutive old woman, her hair swaddled in gold filigree. Upon closer inspection, it becomes evident that it isn't hair that sits atop her skull, but thousands of delicate cilia. Still, aside from that one anomaly, the woman seems normal and generous with her attention. I like coming here. The parson's got a good heart. No idea what he's trying to say sometimes, but he's got a good heart. He wants us to rise up, rise beyond who we are and what we are. We've just got to give ourselves to they who must grieve. That's how I got this, she strokes her hair, in the mists. She leans in, but honestly I'm only here because the parson's a pretty one. Oh, what about the cultist on my right? Left, I've already done right, I can read. You share a quick dialogue with a restless seeming individual of indeterminate age, gender, and species. Hello, they burble gently at you. Their voice is like a chorus of brooks. You're new. There's no way in hell I can do a voice that sounds like a chorus of brooks, so we're just gonna get default voice. <laughs> when they speak, you can see that they do not, in fact, have tongues, but a mouth like the inside of an intestine, soft with pale villi. Perhaps that is why they sound the way they do. The Bureau does not like me in Warbly Justin Mare. They don't even like me in the off-season. But I have seen they who must grieve, and I will remember that day always. It transformed my body, my mind, my heart. Ooh, transformed, eh? The bedraggled parson stands before his people, arms raised. He clears his throat, but before the patrician of the first syllable, officials from the Bureau of Entertainment swarm into the chapel, howling like blood-drunk wolves. An unexpected intrusion. There is little resistance from the congregation, merely an affected resignation. The officers from the Bureau of Entertainments are civil as they evict the crowd. I just fell down a hole, I, I didn't mean to be here. Once they've surmised that you do not belong, the officers leave you largely alone, occupying themselves instead with the ta task of extricating the parishioners. The bedraggled parsons' disciplines cooperate with only minimal contempt, moving where they're told, answering questions when they're asked. All in all, a courteous disruption. Come on, then, let's go, let's go. The rictus smiles of the officers are identical in their splendour, as is the exquisiteness of their uniforms, the oiled shine of the dark hair. The Bureau of Entertainment is a branch of the Ministry of Public Decency, responsible for the well-being and the upkeep of Warbly Juxton Mayor. They take their duty seriously. So we have two options here, we can go quietly, they're too busy pummeling parishioners to listen, you'll surely be able to explain soon, or we can bolt, sod this, you flee from the Bureau of Entertainment Enforcers, who are quite naturally aghast by your audacity, I think we'll go quietly, and hope they don't take a swing. You really should have said something, who's a woman, box shouldered and fetchingly crocodilian. A smile, something scrimshawed into her jaw. Why didn't you say anything? Oh, well, too late now. The bruises are charming, I promise. Now off with you, back to Warbly, back to civilization. She thrusts you through the exit and bolts the door behind you. The journey burns like the birth of a star, boils beneath your muscle. Oh, we didn't find it, did we? And then there's the Bureau of Entertainments where we can 
We can betray the cult and forge a different alliance. Doesn't seem like what I'm here for right now, but I guess it is something I should keep in mind that this is an ongoing thing. I don't think I've ever sided with the cult before. But we see what happens there. Uh, I don't think we can go back down there. Let's let's take a donkey ride. How much is that? It's like three, yeah, three sovereigns. Donkey ride's got good error reduction. Right across to the off season, it bleeds from your teeth. The story that grants you passage, guilt riddled, and sour. What? What is this? All right, let's go across to the off season. Why not? You tell a passerby a story they'd not expected. Something raw, profoundly and audaciously private. They gasp, and the air jumps. It rises into a door like a wicker tunnel strung with fairy lights. You dash through, and the air feels membranous, stinks of burning wire. It is a wall of mucus, two feet thick, and it calls your eyes in oil-slick rainbows. Savage Secrets to get through here is quite expensive. We have a few options here. Go for a walk along the beach. I guess in the off-season all these are a little different. Uh, what the hell? Deliver the Sequences Care Package. Warbly Jackson Mare has become a corpse. The run-down bones of its forgotten attractions swarm with bedraggled men and women all armed with cleaning equipment. This is where the workers of Warbly live and labour to create the gaudy frontage seen by tourists. The beach is now a decaying mess, visited only by the cultists who attend the chapel there. To linger here, you'll need to work, but labour is poorly paid. Take other workers' jobs too often, and they'll firmly encourage you to depart. Go for a walk along the beach. You can scarcely see the beach in the off-season. So dense are the mists. Beneath your feet, something crunches and cracks. Huh. Wobbly Jackson Mare is shattered beams and broken stone, and the beach is stretched of filth blotted in stinking clumps. Even here, there is work to be done. You could assist. Divest the donkeys of their eggs. The donkeys here aren't enthroned in feces, but they require attention nonetheless. Or we could go visit the cult. The bedraggled parishioner, Hazen, issued you an invitation. No reason to be rude. Their chapel lies on the beach at the edge of the mist. It is wefted tendons and yellowing bone. The pews muscle cured in salt. It's amazing how spacious this place is, given the exterior. From the outside, it looks like just another corpse washed onto the shore. You can have a word with the parson. Finally, a gash in the crowd. You go up to speak with the parson. His voice is water, warm, hypnotic. They were kind to you. Bedraggled Parson says, abruptly, and without vitriol. Only a pale wonder. Eyes fever warm under the wilds of his hair. It is all he extends. Was he talking about the officials from the Bureau of Entertainments, or someone else? Should we agree to recruit for the cult? The Bedraggled Parson sighs. They are so lonely. All of them, empty but for the grief of their ribs. If only they'd come here. Find them, he burbles. Find them, find the lonely, the broken-hearted, the broken-breathing, the ones who think this port could ever save them. Find them, tell them about they who must grieve, about us, about how love can turn in the heart like a key and open the soul to the universe. Speak to them of change. Tell them, tell them. The words seep from the bedraggled parson, tie themselves into gibberish, nonsense sounds like a spill of cold water on glass. For minutes, 
he is incoherent or incohate. Then, you need clothes. The cultists cram you in second-hand finery, shabby but serviceable. Now you are suitably attired, they bundle you across the off-season and through a door to Warbly. The membrane blocking it shivers and twitches, reluctantly allowing you to pass through. Time tingles on your skin for several minutes after your arrival. God damn, these people just like keep kicking me out. Uh, We can gather new members. You only lose your vision of the heavens if you uh, fail. Okay, we'll try it. We'll try it. Let's get some people down there. A man, a woman, teenagers, lanky as hounds, a couple too old for the weight of their years. They listen to the sutras and scriptures of transformation you repeat. Their entire bodies poured into the act. Something in the words sings to them. And one by one, they say yes, yes, and yes again, discreet in their reverence. You give them directions to the cult's headquarters and pats on the shoulder. They receive your attention with the gratitude of children. How many people do I need? But either way, I haven't actually found what I what I came here for. Which is... We're going to take out of the donkey ride, just in the middle here. Just, we were recruited for the cult, and now we're just taking a quick donkey ride around. It'll be fine. But yeah, we haven't found the symbol. I, I fear that I, I'm just going around in circles here. I don't want to spend another savage secret to go into the off-season. Oh wait, we can ponder the strange unearthly taste. Did that take us back? No. Probably should have read that. Um, well, I may as well just take another donkey ride. Why not? We'll just, just imagine me just donkeying around all the time. Yeah, we have to leave. Okay. So obviously it isn't here. If it is here, I haven't found it. But I have basically used up the entire episode just exploring the cult of Warbly Juxta Mare. It's a good thing you people like cults, that's all I'm going to say. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time.